In this video, I'm going to cover the best teleprompter and app for making YouTube videos. Teleprompters are great because you don't have to remember what to say. It's right there in front of you. Reduce mistakes while filming, reduce your editing time so you can export your video faster. This setup uses a magical feature named voice track. The text moves to the sound of your voice automatically as you talk. If you want to learn about setting up and using teleprompters, then you're in the right place. As a bonus, I will share tips and tricks that will make you look better and feel more confident on camera while using a teleprompter. So please stick around to the end of the video. I'm going to cover how to set up and assemble a teleprompter, which iPad app to use, how to use the app, some tips on script writing, presenting while using a teleprompter, or the tips and tricks you need to know. All the links are in the description below. Spec-wise, it's a 14-inch screen suitable for iPads and tablets, DSLR and mirrorless cameras, and it also includes a remote control. It's not compatible with wide-angle lenses, and the focal length of the camera lens needs to be more than 28mm. I'm using a 50mm prime lens, which works great. There's plenty of room for larger lenses under the hood. The teleprompter and storage case weighs 5.5 pounds or 2.46 kilograms. Filming without a teleprompter is slower and takes more time in the video edit. As you can forget your script, you can make mistakes, creating more footage to edit. Using a teleprompter will allow you to get more done in less time. Reduce the amount of bad takes, speed up the video edit, so you can create content faster. This teleprompter has saved me tons of time. I ordered this from Amazon Prime, it's the newer X12, it costs $210. The teleprompter can fit all models of smartphones or tablets. You do need to have an iPad or a tablet, plus a tripod and a camera. It's very sturdy and made from all metal construction and no plastic, so it should last you a long time. The drawstring on the hood can be adjusted to suit most cameras and most mobile phone lenses. Included is a high quality metal carry case, so you can pack it up and take it with you to client shoots. With clear instructions for installation, the teleprompter can be set up within minutes. Assembly is really fast, simply take out the lens hood, take out the teleprompter and make sure you don't lose the thumb screw. The holder for the iPad can easily be adjusted by sliding the rails in and out and tighten up using the screws on top. Box is a mobile phone holder mount with a quarter inch screw on the bottom. And the camera mount can be adjusted to suit the size of your camera. It has guide rails on the bottom for easy adjustment. There's multiple screws which will work with most tripods that are available on the market. Simply slide the base onto the teleprompter. Next we get the thumb screw, make sure the thread is pointing downwards and then we're going to screw it in and tighten it up. Each side has a hot shoe mount and a quarter inch screw mount for mounting your accessories such as microphones and LED lights. Slide the iPad into the holder and then tighten the screws on top. Put the screen hood on and there's zips on either side and velcro attachment so i just pull the zips down do the velcro rotate it around and then i do the same on the other side closing the zip down and just neaten up the velcro a bit then pull the lens cover out of the hood so it's ready to accept the camera Pull the hood back into the correct position. Check around the edges of the hood to make sure no light's going to get in through the sides. Next I'm going to connect the camera onto the base plate. I just locate the screw, line it up. And then just tighten it up finger tight. Then you're ready to attach the tripod base plate to the teleprompter. Again, you want to make sure you've got a screwdriver to do this because you want it to be a nice solid fit and connection. I've got it finger tight, now I'm just going to tighten the rest up with a screwdriver, make sure it's straight. And we're ready to attach the teleprompter to the tripod. Slide it in and then lock it into place. For first time use, I've left the dust covers on. I'm going to remove those now. So I'll peel off, there's one on the outside and there is also one on the inside of the teleprompter. So remove both of those. And last of all, I'm just going to adjust the lens hood cover, pulling that on and then there's a toggle either side. So I pull each one. And then I'm going to check the back of the camera to make sure there's nothing in the way of the lens. So power up your system, make sure it all looks good from here. 
then just make any minor adjustments to the hood, make sure there's no light can get in and all the Velcro's down correctly. The next thing I want to talk about is teleprompter apps. Using the right teleprompter app can make a big difference. There are a lot of them in the App Store. Neuro recommends using the InMay app, which works on iOS and Android. It does the job just fine. The problem I found with most teleprompter apps is the scroll speed. Sometimes it's just too fast or too slow. I prefer to use a paid one, Prompt Smart Pro, which is around $20 in the App Store. The app is super simple to use and connects with cloud services like Dropbox and Google Drive. It has a voice track feature which scrolls automatically when you speak and pauses when you pause. If you go off script, voice track knows and will hold your place waiting for you to return. It does need to be able to hear your voice, so it's a good idea to have a lav mic plugged into your iPad so it can hear you clearly. To get the app, go into the App Store and do a search for Prompt Smart Pro. Once you've installed the app, click on one of the file names and then press play. What it will ask you now is ask you for permissions, just allow anything it asks you for and say yes and agree to everything and then you'll be good to go. Okay, so I'm in the Prompt Smart app. The first thing I want to do is adjust a few settings. I want to make sure I'll open one and then we'll click down here on the little cog. And what you want to make sure is that you've got mirror vertically enabled and turn on the guide. This makes it much easier to read. I found this works really well. All the rest of the settings I've turned off. If you want to adjust things like the font, it's over here on the left hand side, you've got it set as Avenir, and then we can adjust the size. You see that it's set to seven. You can just move it like that to adjust it. I'm going to leave it on seven because that's a really good size. And you can adjust things like the font color just by pressing these. And then up the top left, we've got a little back arrow. If you want to edit a script, there's a little pencil tool down in the bottom left hand corner. We can press that and this allows us to edit the script so we can add in more text. The thing I prefer to do is copy from my iMac from a Word document and then just right click and then just paste the text in using that method there. And I find that's much better. And you can make little adjustments to the text if you need to and make sure once you're done that you press the little save icon at the top right, press done. And now you can place it in the teleprompter and then all you need to do to get started is press the big orange play button. So press play, it's in the teleprompter. Okay, it's almost ready. Make sure you press the record button on your camera so your camera is recording what you were talking about. Then press play. So voice tracks initializing. And then we just start talking and our text will start moving. And that is about it. And once you finish reading, press the stop button. To create a new project in the teleprompter app, press the plus button in the top left, then press new script. Give your script a title in the top. And then you can add your text by pasting in. And that's it. Remember to press the done button and you get to go. When writing scripts, I break mine into five sections. We've got the hook, a quick overview of what I'm going to cover in this video. It's usually about 5 to 15 seconds to grab the viewer's attention. We've got the right place and the stick around. Let the audience know they're in the right place and watch until the end of the video as I'll share bonus tips with them. Then we've got the intro, what I'm going to cover in this video. I like to list what's in the video and add the time codes so viewers can see exactly what's in the video. Add the time codes at the end of the video once the edit is complete. Content. The main content of the video, keep it to the point. Spend time writing a good script is well worth the effort. It will save you from having to go back and refilm. Make sure you cover everything that the viewer will find helpful. Cut out any waffle, focus on the useful stuff. Before you write the content, have a list of topics to cover. And finally, we've got the call to action. Ask the audience a question, get them to comment in the video below if you can. Ask for a like and subscribe. Recommend another video that will help them. Moving on to teleprompter tips, before you start, clean all of the surfaces, the front and the rear mirror, clean your iPad so you can clearly see the text. Tip number one, write your script clearly before you start filming. One page of A4 is approximately one minute of talking. Split the text into bite-sized paragraphs. Read through the script a few times before you start recording. Tip number two, to look better on camera. Imagine the camera is a person, move your arms, show expressions on your face and use body language. Tip number three, Bring your personality and try not to be wooden. Use parentheses in your script so you know when to lean into camera and emphasise a subject. Tip number five. Practice, practice, practice. The more you use it, the better you will become. Well guys, if you found that useful, please hit that like button and smash that subscribe. If you didn't like it, hit the dislike twice. 
And also check out my other content. I've got video editing tutorials in DaVinci Resolve and Final Cut Pro. And I've also got web design tutorials. So check out my other videos and I'll see you on the next one.